straight away, instant success. Salvi finds the outside edge. This extra swing is why New Zealand cricket CEO David White will be giving serious thought to changing to the English-made Dukes ball when their contract with Kookaburra officially ends on March the 31st. How do you hit that? How do you possibly hit that delivery? He met with Duke's boss Dilip Jajodia last week, who earlier this month watched his ball being trialled in first-class cricket in Australia for the first time ever. And I made a huge point of being there when the first ball was bowled at the MCG, a Duke's ball. A wonderful feeling to see that. But to hear and read of the reaction of the players has been phenomenal. And they're not just saying, oh, it's an OK ball. They're actually calling for Cricket Australia to switch to the ball for Test Cricket after just one game. It's claimed that the balls which have been handcrafted in East London since 1760 produce extra swing, bounce and longevity. Well, people don't understand that when you look at a ball, you've got six rows of stitching. And with a hand-stitched ball, all six rows go backwards and forwards, you know, underneath the leather. So all six rows are holding the ball together. With a machine stitch ball, the two outer rows are just decoration. And the middle row is being held together. So common sense says that something that's being held together with six rows of stitching has got to be better in holding its firmness. But it's a long way from being a done deal. The Kookaburra ball is used everywhere in the world in all forms of cricket, except England, the West Indies and India as well as supplying New Zealand cricket with all of their first class and international balls for free, they also plough some 160,000 into grassroots cricket. Yeah, we welcome competition. There's always been competition between ball manufacturers and there always will be in the future. We've got a track record uh, of supplying test balls that stretches back to the 1940s, but as we've seen with the, uh, the advent of pink ball day-night test cricket, we remain at the cutting edge for what happens next, and we are the, the ball uh, that has been tested and proven for day-night first class and test cricket. So what exactly is the difference? Ex-England county pro Andre Adams knows both balls very well. The English bowlers are very, very good with their Dukes ball and, and um, you know, there, there's an argument that it swings more, um, but it takes longer to swing and then there's, you know, then, then there's the, the, the Kookaburra ball which swings more from the outset and then doesn't swing as much later on. The seams are quite different as well, like if you look at the two seams, the Dukes ball is more pronounced, but the, uh, the Kookaburra ball is quite sharp. It's been widely suggested that the likes of Tim Southey and Trent Bolt, who bowl well with the Dukes in England, will be even more effective with the English ball here in New Zealand. Dion Nash went pretty well with the Dukes ball, playing for both Middlesex and, of course, New Zealand. I enjoy bowling with both. I think the question is, how will a Dukes perform in New Zealand conditions? Um, and will that change the game here for the better or for the worse? And I think that's a genuine question that needs to be answered, and I couldn't, I don't know. This swings for a lot longer in England, so it becomes very bowler friendly. So you feel as a bowler you're in the game for a long time in England when you're using a Dukes. With a Kookaburra in New Zealand conditions, you can swing it um, early, but if you don't look after the ball, it becomes much more batter friendly. Um, I'd actually quite like to see a, a, a period of, of a trial, really. I mean, I know Australia have just trialled the Dukes ball, so why can't we do that? In the next few weeks, New Zealand cricket may well decide not to re-sign with Kookaburra and juggle their options. Test the Dukes and then make an informed decision. They're unlikely to throw away a high-quality Kookaburra ball and the long-standing support into grassroots cricket unless the English alternative is better for cricket as a whole in New Zealand.